want to look as good as Patty and Dion, and well, Dion ain't look that good, but as Patty and Gladys did last night on Versus, then you might want to get some of this tea and this neutral burst. Drop down in the description box to purchase these fine products. They said, Gladys, you know you work too hard. Baby, I work too hard and I party so hard because it's damn near 7 o'clock and I'm just making a video about that Patty and Gladys epic verses. Then that surprise visit from that old chain smoker heifer Dion that I don't like. Y'all want to talk about it? Here you go. y'all so late but last night's versus with Patty LaBelle and Gladys Knight was one for the culture they said a party ain't a party unless it's ran all through and but I say a party ain't a party unless the police come and knock on your door because that's what the hell they did early this morning from the spirit and the energy that had us in here so festive like making so much noise my neighbors had no call the police they better not let me figure out which one of their motherfucking asses did it because I'm a Get in hell. I think it's this new bitch that don't move next door to me. She don't understand the culture. If she understood what the fuck was going on last night, she wouldn't have called the police. At any rate, starting with Brandy and Monica, I don't created this habit now amongst my friends group that my house is where we set the stage and had a concert for the for the uh for the versus parties. Y'all see on my Instagram. How I put the chairs around. I even went to Target and got some extra chairs. Shouts out to Shucking and Jiving for catering the food. I had with the Big Daddy's look and got $300 worth of liquor for the girls to drink. We had an amazing time fellowshipping all the right people in the room. And so let's talk about it. Now listen y'all, it could just be my lack of exposure or whatever the case may be. But when the news dropped that Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight were going to do of verses, I was very interested in it, but I was like, shit, what all is Gladys going to sing? In my young 37-year-old mind, I was like, Chad, Gladys ain't got a whole bunch of songs. I mean, yeah, I knew Midnight Train to Georgia, uh, Makings of You, uh, Gladys, Gladys, Love Overboard. Like, then beyond that, I started struggling, or whatever the case may be. And I still believe that Patti LaBelle definitely has more recognizable music. But baby, let me tell you one thing about it. Gladys knew, Gladys knew that. And I was wondering what trick Gladys was going to pull out her hat. And baby, it was called the instrumental while Patty was in there with the whole track off the album. Gladys, you notice when this thing started, they played one song, one song, and then Gladys started singing. I was like, yes, God, old school fish. That's how it's supposed to be. Gladys say, listen, I'm a singer. I've been doing this for 40, 11 years. I am a singer and I'm going to come here and sing. And it was absolutely amazing. And her voice was impeccable. The ladies were a class act. Everything about it was great. So then when Gladys started singing, then Patty said, oh, uh, 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 honey, I'm going to let this help her upstage me. And Patty attempted to sing. And don't get me wrong, Patty can still sing. But I think the issue was... Patty must not have had a forward-facing monitor because somehow or another, her singing was a little off from the track or whatever. Gladys pulled that one, two, move, one, two, three move out her purse, baby, and was singing straight to the instrumental. It was everything. So, you know, we always got to talk about the fashions, honey, about the fashions. Those ladies looked amazing. Gladys came through with that purple sequence again, another... A sign of an old school performer. Back in the day, the performers didn't have pyrotechnics. They didn't have screens. They didn't have a whole bunch of dancers. So they gave you some bejewel, some bedazzle, some shiny, something that the light gonna shine off of and make you see Jesus. Yes, God. Gladys had that purple on. And Patty had that wig fixed to the gods, baby. She didn't go to none of y'all old Instagram hairstylists that make you do your own hair before you get there. 
Cause you know, you new stylists, y'all don't wash hair, y'all don't braid it, yes, y'all don't do treatments, y'all simply all all the fuck y'all know how to do is glue on the wigs or whatever. Can't even have do that shit right, snatching out everybody edges. That's a whole nother video. Um, y'all, we cannot get off this call and not talk about how versus is evolving. Um, and it started with, I, I want to back up really quickly and I want to talk about Jill Scott and Erica. Um, you know, Versus was birthed out of necessity, out of COVID, out of giving something back to the culture. In retrospect, I really wish Jill Scott and Erica Badu would have had the opportunity to do a more produced Versus, kind of like Monica and Brandy. Because uh, now that we're seeing what it's evolving into, I do feel slightly cheated by some of the previous acts. But again, it's evolving. They had to work out the kinks. They had to grow it and, and, and everything in between. What I do like about Jill Scott and Erica is that they ushered in the energy of celebration, not competition, right? So then Monica and Brandy followed suit. And somebody asked me this morning, who won, Gladys or Patty? And I was like, you can't even do that. There was not a you who the culture won, but it was not a who won situation because those ladies just sat there. They gave us a glimpse into their lives. Like I love the part when Patty was like, you know, you were with me when my sister died and you were with me when my son was born and all this type of stuff. Because as a listener and as a viewer and as a fan, you always do wonder what really goes on in these people's personal lives. And it's not as if Gladys and, and Patty got Facebook and Instagram or are that active on either of those platforms that we know what's going on with them. Yeah, like I, I'm curious to know, um, do Patty LaBelle be on the phone gossiping with, with, with Gladys Knight and Aretha and all the rest of the girls and Dion and all of them? We're gonna get on Dion. Oh, we're gonna get on Dion. Um, and you know, it, it's good to know that these ladies are friends. Like I was really interested in the stories. Like I want to hear all that. Yeah, girl, I remember backstage at 69 at the Apollo Theater. You had that nasty red dress on and I, you had to come into my dressing room and borrow my stockings. Cause like, I like all of that. I was telling a friend of mine, um, you know, because again, Versus started out with the artists being, you know, just in their house doing it on Instagram for the culture. Um, I would not be surprised if at this point they are paying the artist. And I say that because for one, let's just take Brandy and Monica who had over 6 million views, right? And Ciroc was the sponsor. I would, I wouldn't be surprised if in the beginning sponsorship looked like okay we're going to pay for lodging and travel and glam or whatever the case may be and give you a per diem and if it hasn't changed turned into a full on check because if you think about it six million plus eyeballs were placed on that product it was a commercial it would it, it would be the same as if Ciroc would have booked a commercial during the Super Bowl per se um, now that Apple Music has gotten involved, I would not be surprised, especially considering those well-produced commercials that Gladys and Patty did with the whole, Gladys, this is what I made, what are you bringing? Patty, I bet you can't do this, which was genius, by the way. Now that Apple is involved, and they would not get involved if there was not something for them to gain financially, I would not be surprised if they have now found a way to monetize this situation and pass some of those profits on to the fans. Um, what I do like about the whole Apple situation is that it has made it cleaner, more streamlined, and easier to access for some people. Um, before, I was looking at it on Instagram and then um, sending it to the TV. Hence my last party, it was small on the screen. Now with this, I was able to pull it up on my laptop through Apple, Apple Music, do full screen on my laptop, and then shoot that to the TV. So we were able to watch it as if we were watching it on TV. Um, now, I don't know if Apple runs ads through Apple Music or not, but I'm pretty sure Apple reaps some sort of monetary return on this. And then I was thinking, you know, moving forward, because we want to keep this thing free for the fan, yet allow the artist to make money, 
product placement and simply giving the artist a script would really work in terms of being able to monetize this vehicle but still keep it raw, fresh, and authentic. Could you imagine if they just give Patty and Gladys a script and every, you know, 20 minutes or so, Patty has to say, looking for new car insurance? Well, honey, get your car insurance with Geico. And if you sign up right now, you and your safe driver can get a 20% discount. Use hashtag or use code versus uh, to get your 20% discount. There it is. That's a worked-in commercial advertisement. Geico then gives, you know, $200,000 to Versus or Apple or whomever for the product placement, for the shout out, and the artist can then get paid. I definitely see it evolving into a situation like that. And then also too, what would be cute, I know YouTube has the super chat function um, where people are able to tip you. If they were able to work in a situation where the fans could just put in a dollar, two dollars, or whatever the case may be, that would be a bomb ass way to monetize the situation and for these artists to get paid. With us being in a corona situation right now, honestly and truthfully, it is unrealistic to think that we're going to be going to concerts any time soon. But Versus has set the stage for us to be able to enjoy concerts and for artists to still get paid. I saw um, some more had posted something on her Instagram one day to the effect of... Um, you know, my business has forever been shattered. Her business being the live concert business. My business has forever been changed. You know, something along the lines of I need to find a new hustle or I need to find a new way to parlay what is going on. And this is definitely the platform or, or the foundation for artists to be able to tour virtually. Granted, it may not pay as much as touring around the world and filling out arenas, but a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. And speaking of a whole, a little bit of something, baby. So towards the end of the verses, we in the house, we fool our line, we full of the good liquor. And I literally said out loud, it, I said it'll be something that they bring Dion Warwick old ass out here on the stage. Bitch, less than 60 seconds later, Dion walks out on the stage and my house erupts in a thunderous just noise. Everybody's like, oh, oh. And I saw some people on Instagram saying, I conjured her up, I spoke to her up, and some people even implied that I must have do something because I was laying Easter eggs this whole way through. Um, actually, I was not. I did not know anything. And for those of y'all who are wondering what my beef is with Dion Ward and why I've been going in on Dion, I told y'all my brain is just really random. I literally was just on the sofa and I thought back to her, um, her, uh, appearance on Celebrity Apprentice and when she told Brandy Glamour, oh, I got your number, huzzy, and watching her on there and then it sent me down this rabbit hole of watching some of her interviews on YouTube. Legend or not, and I'm not going to discredit Dion's body of work and her contribution to music. I don't like her. I think she has a fucked up attitude and a nasty disposition. I don't fucking like her. And that's really what it boils down to. That's where it starts and stops. I don't like her. Uh, and so that is why I take delight in cracking jokes on Dion because I don't like her. So for those of y'all who are wondering, you know, what the beef was, somebody's like, did she snub you at a party? No, I just don't like her. And I'm honest enough to be able to tell y'all, I just don't like her. I can celebrate her work. I can celebrate what she's contributed. I can celebrate and recognize the fact that she is a legend and not like her at the same time. Uh, the two, you know, the two can both live in the same house. However, I must say, one for the culture, her walking out on that stage was fucking epic. I went up. I enjoyed it. I was happy to see her in this context. Yes, God, there was something powerful about all three of those legends on that stage singing That's What Friends Are For. And then y'all thought I was playing. That bitch got on that microphone and say, I fall my way through the rush hour trying to make a home just for you. Now, is it me? Or they shaded the shit out of Dion when Dion was like, all right, so what we doing next? 
nothing with your talk singing ass, okay? You ought to be glad we let your ill-fitted suit wearing ass even come out here and do a quick one-two on our thing, but we're not sharing no stage with you, bye. And you can tell Dion wasn't ready to go. Dion was happy to be there, baby. Dion said, yes, God, baby, I got my mojo back. I ain't been on the stage since 89. Yes, God, honey, that shit was hilarious. She's like, all right, so what we doing next? They sent Dion on her happy, merry ass way. It was classic. And all the shade thrown, Patty got mad because the people didn't have her lyrics. At one point, she was like, what's going on with my lyrics? Now, listen. I ain't never been no singer before, and I damn sure ain't been one for 40 plus years. Um, I don't know, just as a regular person, I just automatically assumed that a singer would remember all the words to their top songs, especially the ones that you sing in heavy rotation. But I guess that is not the case. Um, for those of you guys out there in the music business, I mean, is it customary for an artist to have their lyrics uh, scrolling on a teleprompter when they're performing um, especially considering it's not like they were singing album cuts that people don't know they were singing all the songs that they would sing when they're doing a Vegas show or a Valentine's Day concert or something so I just I don't know I just assumed that Patty would know all the lyrics to all of her best songs especially considering the fact that you've been singing these songs in heavy rotation since the 70s let's not pretend like in the 90s and the 2000s that Patty and Ori Gladys just put out so much damn music. Y'all singing the same old songs that made y'all famous in y'all's heyday. Um, it was just good, y'all. This was good for the culture. We needed it. We needed it. We need more of it. Uh, we definitely got to get an Anita Baker and Stephanie Mills. I definitely think that is the perfect line up for the next one. I also think that Versus is going to have to figure out a way to pull in the artists that don't necessarily pair well with um, another artist. So, you know, everybody's calling for like a Sade. And some people were saying Sade and Anita Baker. And it's the thing, okay, yes, they have a similar register. But they sing two different, total, totally different styles of music. And, 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 and I don't know that in real life their paths or their careers have crossed at any point. So it's like, how do you pull in a Sade? And I definitely think you would have to, you would have to do like a young and an old. It would just have to be so polar opposite that you don't view it from a comparison perspective, like, like I don't know. And I'm just saying this, you pull in, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sade, and, uh, Sade and Jasmine Sullivan. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely, and I know it will never happen. It'll never happen because um, Beyonce and Jay-Z just do their own thing. Um, everybody keeps saying, who could Beyonce do? I definitely think one for the culture would be Beyonce and Janet Jackson. And just hear me out, because I know y'all, Beyonce can sing, Janet can't sing, all this different stuff. But I'm looking at it from an icon perspective, and realistically, Beyonce is not doing anything that Janet hasn't already accomplished, okay? And that's just true tea. Janet was the black icon, global artist of her time, and still currently. Janet has laid the foundation for Beyonce to be everything she is. Like, Janet was that global black powerhouse. And to be honest with you, and I tell people this all the time, and there's no shade to our more contemporary artists, but the reasons why I think the Janets and the Michaels and the Madonnas and the people of that era were 10 times better than these current artists because they did it without the power of the internet. Like these were hardcore physical album sales, newspaper and radio advertisements, going from city to city, signing CDs and Sam Goody. You know what I'm saying? And they still managed to get global success without the internet as a marketing vessel. But I would love to see like Janet and Beyonce sit down 
and for Beyonce to pay homage to Janet because she'd be fucking lying if she didn't say Janet, she listened to Janet growing up, Janet inspired her. I would also like for there to be a conversation about with Janet and Beyonce with that whole Super Bowl fiasco because it was reported that after Janet and Justin had that, that Beyonce was caught making a fuss about never ever performing after Janet again. I guess she felt like Janet's performance upstaged, you know, or, 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 or overshadowed her performance that year, whatever the case may be, if it's even true. But I would love to see Versus move in that type of direction and pull in some of our our big time artists and just just let, just let us get some feel good, you know, backstories. Um, maybe even pull in a way for them to take a couple fan questions or audience questions. Um, I, you know, not super duper produced, but keep it going on. Needless to say, y'all, last night was definitely one for the culture. Um, I'm sure it exposed Patty and Gladys to, to, to a younger audience. You know, it's unfortunate because I don't have the total numbers yet. Maybe y'all do. I know that their numbers are not going to be as high as Brandy and Monica. And that's not because they don't have the interest. It's simply because the majority of their fan base bout don't know how to use the internet. You see Patty LaBelle was talking about how she still used a flip phone. And I believe her because if my mom or my daddy were living right now, they would not know how to get on Instagram. They damn sure don't have no Apple Music account or anything of that sort. Uh, Swiss Bees and Timberland, y'all are definitely on to something. Patti LaBelle, Dionne Warwick, and Gladys Knight, thank y'all for y'all contribution and what y'all did last night. It just was a feel-good time, one for the culture. Everybody who was at my party enjoyed the party. Um, and y'all, I might find a way, and y'all drop it in the comments and let me know what y'all think. At the next Versus party, people kept asking me, was I going to stream it? So y'all could participate and be a part of it. And I am willing to do that. But my rationale was people would not be able to watch both at the same time. I don't know logistically how that would work. Um, and, and especially, too, considering what platform that you're looking at the verses on, sometimes there's a delay. Um, so, you know, if that's something that y'all would be interested in, please let me know in the comments. Um, and now I'm going to get in here and watch this Tamron Hall stuff so I can come to y'all with a comprehensive uh video about this Andrew Gillum coming out of this bisexual channel and um uh, because I had already told y'all that because I knew that girl from her for her works back in college. At any rate, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll call y'all later. Bye. Oh and I watched the season finale of P Valley. I might give y'all that too tonight.